six days in this book, we know everything. No, we don't. And so, God, you reserve the right to show us some things that we don't even know. Move, Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. It's a little bit warm. All right, all right. Let's get into the Word. And if you, uh, if you can just see, if you got your eyes open, you see we're in a new-looking sanctuary. Amen? Yes, amen? I say we're in a new-looking sanctuary. Amen? amen? And it looks beautiful. It's, it, the, 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 it, it brightens the room. It reflects the light so well. And so we thank God for that. Amen. All right, Father. Free to rest. Am I in the right lesson? August 14th to the 20th. Yes. Free to rest. And just for a full disclaimer, we are going to start with our memory text. And we are going to stay in our memory text for a little bit. There is no way that you can start in Psalm 27 verse 1 and just run off. You just can't. Because that scripture arrests you. It detains you there. Uh, you don't even need a defense attorney. It just arrests you and it keeps you there. So we're going to start with uh, Psalm 27 verse 1. I know I have some mics around. If somebody can read our memory text, just to make sure you turn your mics on. And if you can just, again, I truly believe in showing reverence to the Word of God. If you can stand and read that text right there. Now, memory text, Psalm 27, verse 1. Of the book of the Bible. Both. Okay, there you go. Both. Um, no, 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 no. Either one. Either one. Either one. The memory text says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Gertrude. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Quick question. Who is talking here? Who wrote this Psalm 27 verse 1? David. David wrote Psalm 27 verse 1. And so he starts with a declarative and then he follows with an interrogative. And he, he, he declares, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then he comes with an interrogative. He says, and whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Anything that comes to your mind when you, when, when you hear that memory text, Sister Reader, Sister Kasuba, anyone in the sanctuary, what comes to your mind and what does the Spirit speak to you? Lusadio, Lusako, anyone, Sean, Kendrick, what comes to your mind when you hear David say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For me, that says that you know, a person can destroy your body, but the Lord can destroy your body and your soul. And so with that being said, David is saying that he feared no man, uh, and, and, and God is with him. And so as long as God is with him, he has no reason to fear no man, because a man cannot destroy the whole man. And so he has reverence for the Lord God that can destroy his body and his soul. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Sister Gertrude? Go ahead. Go ahead. What comes to your mind? What does the Spirit speak to you when you hear that memory text? Uh, the Lord is master of the universe and He's with me always. And my strength comes from Him and my strength and the light comes from Him every day. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord is the master of the universe. Uh, you can't talk that. She said, the Lord is the master of the universe. Uh, before you, the earth is part of the universe, He is the master of the universe. Amen. And then she said, He is with me all the time. All right, all right. Go ahead, Sister Kashiba. What comes to you? Psalm 27, verse 1. Um, I'm just going to sum it all up from what Sister Rita and Sister Gertrude said, is that I can't do anything without God. And as long as I have God on my side, then I don't have any fear. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. You see, free to rest. And in this quarter, we are talking about resting in who? Resting in Christ, right? That's the, that's, 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 the, that's the title for the entire quarter, is resting in Christ. And now David was talking as if he has been through some stuff. You can't say, whom shall I fear, unless something came in your life that could have caused you to fear, right? And so he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, we, if you can open your Bible, your Bible app, and get to Psalm 27, you will recognize that this is the thesis of Psalm 27. And then what David does, <laughs> like a good writer, he, he, he gives you the thesis, and then he comes up with all these things that undergird the thesis that support what he just said. So he starts by saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then he goes on for the next 13 verses, Brother Marlon, and he undergirds the thesis. He said, this is why I can say that. And, and so you need to take the time and read the entire Psalm 27 in order to have the appreciation of what David just said. Let me just get to verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. That sounds like David has some enemies. I love Dr. Cosby, Dr. Cosby from Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. He would say, you're going to have some fake friends and, and, and real enemies in, real, in this life. You are going to have some fake friends and real enemies. David had some enemies. But listen to how he described what happened to them. He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, what happened? Talk back to me. What happened? They stumbled and they fell. Right before they got to him, God tricked them. And then... Go on, go on, go on. He said in verse 3, Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not what? Fear. Shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Oh my God. He says, no matter who and what comes around me, God is going to keep me, right? And then he goes on, he says, verse 5, for instance, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Shall he set me up upon what? Upon a rock. The reason I'm saying that, and the reason I had to bring verse 5, he said he shall hide me upon a rock. Now that doesn't make no sense. I know that's double negative, but I'm going to go back and, and speak proper English. That does not make any sense. How do you hide somebody on, on a rock? That like an oxymoron. That doesn't mean. Sister Rita says that sounds like an oxymoron. You hide someone under the rock. You hide someone inside the rock. But David said he hides me, Bishop. He puts me on a rock. I told you we're going to stay on the memory text for a minute. We're talking about resting in Christ now, right? Free to rest. David said God is so awesome. God is so good that he hides me in a conspicuous location where my enemies can see me but can get to me. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. You should have been a little happier than that. He said, I, God is 
going to place me in a place, he's going to put me in a place where my enemies can see me, but can't get to me. He's going to hide me upon a rock. That's an awesome place to be hidden in plain view. Huh? Yes. He, God is not going to put you in a witness protection program somewhere and change your name and social security number. No, he's going to display you and your enemies can't even get to you. We're talking about free to rest. So in this week's lesson, we are starting with a memory text that gives us an assurance of who God is and how we can rest in the God of our salvation. Amen. So that's the beginning on, us on Sabbath afternoon. If you have anything else to share from the memory text, anyone has to share from Sabbath afternoon, otherwise we're going to leapfrog and get to Sunday healing rest. Uh, but if you got, go ahead, Sister Rita. Uh, 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 you guys prayed for my brother, and my brother was missing. And they put him... Uh, this is some some app uh, uh, of events in, in in the city of St. Louis. Uh, he was posted in that app, and this picture was posted as well. And and uh, uh, after it was posted, my son reposted. And within an hour after my son reposted, everybody reported every step of the way when they saw my brother. Mm -hmm. And 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 mm -hmm. and God giving you that rest. You told me that you felt that he was okay. God had already told me that he was okay. Yes. But to see how he operated and he worked just that fast, he had been missing for a week. And just one, one, one thing that happened that posted. And then the guys that, 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 um, that, that found my brothers and had my brothers, they called my son and said that they think that they have him. And my son told them to hold him, don't let him go. And it was four guys. And they told my brother, you better not go. And, and, and my brother thought he had did something wrong, and he didn't know who was coming to get him. He said he was relieved when it was my son coming to get him. So God put you in that place of rest. I mean, turmoil is all around you, and it looks bad. But that peace, that peace that God gives you that surpasses all understanding, nobody understands it. But God gives you that peace, and you can, you can, you can, you can have rest. And, and, and everybody else is wondering why she's not tripping. Uh, he's been gone for a week. What's wrong with you? Aren't you supposed to be doing more? No, God said he got him. Yes. And amen. brought him home. Amen. Yes. Can we say amen to that? Amen. That's Sister Rita's brother. Somebody say, why is she sharing that? Why is that relevant? Well, it is. Because whatever we read, we have to apply it in our lives. It's not enough to just talk about the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then Wednesday come an issue in your life and you don't apply the word you learn on Sabbath. Her brother who, if you don't mind, has disability and Sister Rita is responsible for him for some reason. This, he was missing. And when we spoke and we prayed together on Sabbath morning, I felt it and she felt it. He said, you know, wherever he is, he's good. And we trusted God to take care. And you heard the first account testimony that God took care of him. Now, if human beings can use an app to, 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 to locate somebody, if human beings can use an app to trace somebody, what do you think God can do? We're talking about the, the God of the universe. And Sister Gertrude said he's the master of the universe. And, and That's the God whom we serve. And let me add, the time that he was missing, there was a person, there was a disabled person that was hit, and a hit and run, and it was a John Doe. And my family was all worked up because they thought that it was him. Mm -hmm. And I said, it wasn't him. And it wasn't him. They said, how do you know it wasn't him? I said, because God would, would, would have told me if it was him. And so when the incident happened, my brother was at the hospital, and uh, this person was hit like at 9.30. Mm -hmm. And he was at the hospital from 5 o'clock that, 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 that evening to about 12 o'clock that night. So although he wasn't in my home, God gave me a play-by-play -play of where he was that that's not him because he wasn't even there. He was at the hospital. And, it, it, and, and just the comfort of, of God just giving you Give, give me your peace of mind. Give me that rest that, that, that you should be really going crazy about. That, 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 was, that was an awesome thing that happened in my brother's life. Amen. 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 We're going to go to Sunday. Healing rest. Healing rest. Uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. We find this account. We find this story that is presented by St. Mark. Um, Mark chapter 2 is only four verses, so I'm going to read it, 
And then we're going to get into healing rest. And again, he, meaning Jesus, entered into Capernaum, his mission headquarters. After some days, and it was noised. That means it was on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram that Jesus was in town. It was noised that he was in the house. And straight away, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. Meaning you couldn't even come through the door. And he preached the word unto them. That's Jesus. He preached the word. And they, they, they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, somebody who was paralyzed, which was born of four. He was carried by four different friends. And verse 4, And when they could not come near unto him, by the press, because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. I'm going to go to verse 5. And when Jesus saw their faith, don't, don't miss that. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, Aren't you glad Jesus is that gentle? He called this brother, son. He said, son, your sins be forgiven you. But then there were some church folks. <laughs> but then there were certain scribes <laughs> sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And they were right. They were right. Only God can forgive sin. And he was right in the midst of them. And I'm going to keep on going because we need to, to get the background to appreciate the breakdown, right? And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they saw reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Jesus read their minds. Well, he said, which one is easy? To say to the sick of the palsy, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk. Verse 10. But that, that it may be known that the Son of Man, capital S, the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, and then he spoke to the one who was sick. I say unto thee, arise and take up your bed and go your way into your house. And immediately, can somebody say immediately? immediately? And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them, before all of them, in so much that they were all what? Amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen it done in this fashion. Healing rest, healing rest. I'm going to open up the floor here. We heard, we heard the story, right? Jesus is in the house. There's so much people in the house that nobody can get in once again through the, or the door, right? And so these friends who had, their health was fine, but they wanted their friend to have what they had. And they took him to Jesus. All of us want friends like that, don't we? Amen. We want friends who will take us to Jesus. It's not enough to just go to Jesus all by yourself. But you've got to take somebody else to Jesus with you. And so they took him. And the good news, I'm so glad we're here at Lighthouse today. Because the roofs of those houses in those days were designed just like our roof. They were flat roofs. And they were not roofs just made of tin and... and, and it, there were roofs that were made of clay and mud and wood and all of that. So when you hear them tearing up the roof, they had to dig. They had to do some work to get through the mud and the wood and all of that to get through. They just drink, didn't drill a hole so quickly like that. They had to put some work. They were intentional. And by the time they finished, they dropped the man at the feet of Jesus. That's the right place to be. They dropped him at the feet of Jesus. 
And so we are talking about healing rest. So what do you get? We are talking about free to rest. We are talking about resting in Christ. What do you get here when you hear about healing rest? Because what was the issue? What was the issue with the, with the scribes and the Pharisees and all of the church folk? What was the issue? What were they murmuring and complaining about? To, to do what? To the of sin. So they were murmuring and complaining because the first thing that Jesus did with this man was to forgive, forgive his sin. So, were they right or were they wrong? Brother Nash, I know you're behind the camera, my brother. We can catch your voice. Were they right or were they wrong? Were, were they wrong when they said only God has power to forgive sin? They were right. 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 They used the wrong God here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> they were right, yeah. but their, 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 their minds, their thought process was, was messed up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And, and why is it that they didn't think Jesus was God? Why is it? I know you may still look at me like, Elder, are you really that? I am asking that. El Bishop Stewart, Bishop is in the house. I felt an earthquake, but the bishop was walking in. <laughs> Good morning, Elder Stewart. So, when they, when they were right, why is it that they were skeptical about Jesus? Because they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know Jesus. Ah! What is it about Jesus that made them think that they know where this man is God? He was man. He was man? <laughs> did, 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 did they know where he came from? Yes. Uh, a carpenter's son. A carpenter's son. They knew his father's name too. He was not a royalty, huh? Okay, okay. Uh, where Jesus came from, the zip code. Uh, you, you have been in the city council, you know what I'm talking about. The zip code, when they do the, the lining and all of that, the, the, the drawing and all that. Where Jesus came from, was the zip code the one that people thought highly of or not? No, no. They were red line of Jesus. They were red, okay, where Jesus came from, it was red line, right? Okay, I'm building up something here. So they were skeptical of Jesus, that he was not God. They were skeptical of him to be able to heal, not only to heal, to, to forgive sins, forgive me. Mm -hmm. They knew his father, his earthly father, uh -huh, by the name of what? Joseph. Joseph, okay. They knew his mama, by the name of what? And she got pregnant with him while she was, was she in her 20s or was she a teenager? All right now. Was she married or not married? Oh, let's put the brakes here. Let's put the brakes here. What does that tell us? What does that tell us how we ought to treat people in the church? Can, can you imagine Mary walking in on the Sabbath one day and she, huh? <laughs> they, oh, you mean you mean they would have called an emergency board meeting? Yeah. Okay, okay. They would have said, "We something's wrong. We 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 knew she was gonna get married. We knew when the the, the, the what, what the shower do they call the shower? Baby shower. No, 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 not the baby shower, baby. She would be in trouble with that <laughs> before the baby shower. When somebody's getting married, the bridal shower. 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 Yeah, 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 the bridal shower. You know, we knew that we were going to have a bridal shower. It hasn't taken place. And here she walks in pregnant. She's not married. Put the baby before the marriage. She's a teenager. She's a peasant little girl. So we know his mother. And we know his dad. And he's talking about forgiving sins. Can you? So now you see why they were skeptical of him, right? But it's more than that. Their hearts was not right. Because as much as they could have looked at Jesus from his earthly circumstances, still God could illuminate their minds to recognize him for who he was. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, for somebody who is watching me online, be careful. What? You think of somebody simply because of their outward appearance, simply because of their resume, or what may not be on their resume. Be careful, because, oh my God, I feel it, I feel it, because God is not a man, and He is no respecter of persons. God does not look at us the way we look at one another. 
Men look on the outward appearance. Come on, help me tell Sister Rita. God, what does God do? God looks at the heart. He goes cardiovascular. God looks at the heart, ain't it? And so they were skeptical of Jesus because he forgave sin. And Jesus, like a good lawyer, posed the question to them, didn't he? Can you read Mark chapter 2? What was the question he asked them? It's right there. In verse 9. Can somebody read it out loud? Mark chapter 2, verse 9. We're talking about healing rest. We're going to get there, and then we're going to go on to Monday, Tuesday, and on and on. But verse 9 of Mark chapter 2, if you can read it, go ahead and read it. Mark 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Well, it, is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk? Mm -hmm. He asked them the question, which one is easier? To forgive sin or to heal somebody? Did they answer him? Did they answer him? No. no. They were quick to complain, but when he talked to them, nobody spoke. Because he, he got them, right? He got, and sometimes, you know, the Bible says even a fool is considered wise when they keep their mouth shut. Huh? Nobody knows what you don't know until you open your mouth. And so Jesus said, okay, I know what you're thinking. Now I've got a question for you. And when they didn't answer, what did Jesus do? He turned right around and kept on doing what he did. Mm -hmm. So he forgave the sins. Why did Jesus go first and address the sin issue with this particular man? Because there have been times before where Jesus healed the person first. But in this case, he addressed the sin issue first. Why is it? Why do you think Jesus felt that was more important and then he addressed the physical part? Anyone with, go ahead. He needed that spiritual healing. He needed to be um, free of guilt of sin. Okay. He healed him spiritually first and then physically. So the man's condition had been, the, 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 where he was had been contributed to his lifestyle. Okay. There are some things that happen in our lives as a result of our lifestyle. There are some things happen to us because of what we have done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah. I knew it was going to get quiet, but that's all right. <laughs> there are people who exercise every day. There are people who eat right every day. There are people who walk with God closer than you and I combined. And yet, one day they wake up and they, they get a, a diagnosis from the doctor. It had nothing to do with anything they have done. And then there are people who burn the candle on both sides. And then they end up with liver cancer, and lung cancer, and throat cancer, and, and all kinds of stuff because of their lifestyle. This man's condition was brought about because of his sinful lifestyle. And I can say that because I have authority from Desire of Ages. I know it's not popular, it is in my house. In the book Desire of Ages, the prophet of the Lord, the prophetess, she said, he had lived a sinful life. And the greatest burden that was weighing heavy on him was not so much his physical condition as much as what you address, sweetheart, his spiritual condition. And Jesus being God, who sees beyond what human beings can see, he knew, I need to address the root cause of this. And he addressed his spiritual condition. He knew that this man needed more relief of his guilt than anything else. If Jesus would have stopped there, that man would have been happy that day to know that God had forgiven him. Have you ever been in a place where you needed forgiveness from God? Oh, that's a question. <laughs> have you ever been in a place where you... I know I have. And there is such a relief when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says, Son... Your sins are forgiven you. Oh my God. Your situation may still be the same, but when you know that my sins have been forgiven, mm -hmm. woo, mm -hmm. you walk out a free individual. And the Bible says, when the son sets you free, you're free, oh, you missed it. I didn't say the board set you free. 
I didn't say the conference set you free. I said when the sun, capital S O N, when the sun set you free, you are free indeed. You don't have to worry about human beings to approve of the forgiveness that God has given you. You can walk with your back straight because you know God has forgiven me. So we are talking about healing rest, right? But Jesus is so awesome. He didn't stop there. What did he do after healing the spiritual condition? He healed him physically. And so what does this tell us? Because we've got to go on now. What does this tell us about healing rest, family? What does he tell us about healing rest? What does, what does he tell us about the type of rest that God brings to us on the physical as well as the spiritual? What did you get from it? For me, it tells me that only God can do it. So uh, with, the, with the physical and the spiritual, uh, even with us putting judgment on others, uh, only God sees the heart. Only God knows what's going through, uh, uh, what you're going through. Only God knows... Uh, because sometimes sickness happens to people and nothing has happened. It, it hasn't been their lifestyle. So, so it could be a testimony for, for them. It could be a testimony for others. Uh, but what it tells me is that God is in total control uh, spiritually and naturally. So. Amen. And if you notice, <laughs> we just covered Sunday and Monday. <laughs> we did. So, as Sister Rita said, which is at the bottom of Sunday, it says, when someone gets sick, it's not good to start assigning blame. Don't rush to conclusion into saying, it must be because of this, it must be because of that. Because you don't know. You remember the person who was born blind and the disciples said, who sinned? And Jesus said, what? Neither one sinned. He did not sin. His parents didn't sin. It, but it's because God will be glorified in this situation. And so don't rush to conclusion just because a calamity happens in somebody's life. Right. Sometimes it got nothing to do with their lifestyle. Because life happens. And if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you will see what Solomon said. He said, good things and bad things happen to all people. Okay, I, I said to all people. That means the educated and the ignorant. That means those who have status in the society and those who don't. Things happen to everyone. In this case, we learn something about healing rest. And then on Monday, which we shouldn't spend too much time there, we talk about the root treatment, right? How did Jesus go about healing the paralytic? What was the first thing Jesus did for him? We just read about that. Which was, he forgave him of his sins, right? Right? Because Jesus knew that was the very thing that the man needed more than anything else. There's a, there's a, go ahead, sir. No, I was just going to, you actually said what I was going to say at some point. Mm -hmm. Is that to me the most important thing here was the spiritual healing. We may get that physical healing. It may be immediate and sometimes it may take a little longer. But the, the, the spiritual healing, <clears throat> pardon me, was the most important thing because that gives us our rest, our rest in Christ, as we know, that is the, the subject matter for this, for this quarter. Amen. So I just wanted to add, add that on. Amen. Amen. The spiritual healing first and then the physical healing. We know God is able. And he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I love here, uh, Sister Rita, can you read, there's a paragraph on Monday. It starts with, talk is generally cheap. Okay. Talk, uh -huh. talk is generally cheap, but not when God speaks. Come on, oh, 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 oh. you can't go right past that just like. <laughs> You can't. No, no, that's too good right there. Can you read it one more time? Talk is generally cheap, uh -huh. but not when God speaks. Yes. By God's powerful word, all things came into being, Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. Although forgiveness is not something that we can see, it is costly. Forgiveness costs the life of the Son of God on the cross. Everything else is secondary. 
To demonstrate the power and reality of forgiveness, Jesus then chose to heal the paralytic. There it is. God wants to cure us on the inside first, and then sometimes he chooses to bring us immediate physical feel, uh, a physical healing, as with the paralytic. Or sometimes we will have to wait for resurrection morning to experience physical healing. Either way, our Savior wants us to be able to rest in the assurance of his love and grace and forgiveness, even now, even amid our suffering. Amen. Amen. And you know, you know with, this, with, this, with, with this day, uh, you can be going through, uh, and, and you can be dealing with a lot. And sometimes Satan, Satan brings sickness on you because as, as, as Job's wife said Come on. Uh, when Job was going through, why don't you just curse your God and die? Uh -huh. but, 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 but with going through these trials and going through these tribulations, that, that builds your faith. And so uh, it, when, when things happen that you can't understand, you just have to rest in that faith. That's the only thing you can rest in. My God, my God. I know I'm in the right place, Lusanja Jr. And, and because, I'm and I'm, 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 I don't give it to you, because you can feel how the Holy Spirit is leading this discussion, amen? You can feel it because what you just said is exactly what we need to get out of that. Thank you so much. Go ahead. No, I just want to say I agree with Sister Rita mm -hmm. Harley, and then I myself had that highlighted everything else is secondary. So to me, it just meant my relationship with God is primary. Whatever God brings, the healing, mm -hmm. whatever he brings into my life mm -hmm. is primary. But everything after oh, that no. is secondary. That was the most important thing to me on this page. Amen. You know, it, it, you, but you cannot, and I'm going to say this, you cannot, you cannot say that unless you have a tight relationship with God. You cannot be a five-pound Christian and talk like that. Because that means you have surrendered your will to God. You are saying to God, have your way. Have your way. The first thing I need for you to do for me is secure my eternal salvation. And then everything else is secondary. Job suffered. It had nothing to do with Job. As a matter of fact, it was God who initiated the whole situation. God is the one who talked to the devil and said, have you seen myself with Job? And then when the calamity hit Job, it had nothing to do with him. And so sometimes things happen that had nothing to do with how someone... Look at uh, Paul. And then when we talk about healing, sometimes, and that's why I love what the writer of the lesson said here, they say, uh, when you talk about talk is cheap, he said, uh... There it says, God wants to cure us in, on, the, on the inside first. And then, sometimes, he chooses to bring us immediate physical healing, as with the paralytic. Or sometimes, we will have to wait for resurrection morning to experience physical healing. That's very important. And, you know, I'm not, I, I don't want to just rush the lesson just to rush on the lesson. It is because after we read the lessons, we have to apply these things in our lives. It's not enough to just have the intellectual knowledge of the Word of God. We have to apply it in our lives. So that if the truth be told, and it will, sometimes physical healing does not come immediately. Sometimes physical healing does not come eventually. Sometimes physical healing does not come at all. I know that's hard because we serve a God who we believe He's able and we know He's able. And sometimes we see Him answering this prayer and heal this person and then when He doesn't happen to this one, we're wondering in our human side. I, I, I need to talk to some real folks. Have you ever been there? Yes. You, you, okay, I'm using, let, let me use another analogy. You are living right and you see somebody who is not living right being blessed. I mean, they don't even know how to spell Jesus. And they're being blessed. And then you're looking at yourself, you say, Lord, why not me? The same thing with healing. Jesus resurrected Lazarus, didn't he? But when his earthly father, Joseph, got sick, he died. Joseph died before Jesus died. And yet, 
He did not resurrect his own earthly father. John the Baptist, his cousin, was beheaded before there was Al-Qaeda or ISIS. John was beheaded. They chopped his head off. But John, Jesus didn't stop that from happening. And so the point is, God is sovereign. And his providences are beyond our understanding. And, you know, he's, he's uh, my oldest son, he's, he's 34 years old now. And I brought both my boys up in church. And when he went to college, he lost his mind. Didn't study the word, wasn't doing none of that. When he came back, he was on his back. He had hypothyroidism, and his legs gave out on him. And when he got God back, that's when God restored him. So, 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 so it's not like God isn't dealing with us. It's not like God isn't warning us. It's not like God isn't talking to us. He's talking to us all the time. And so, so, so people, people want to make judgment and think they know what's going on. But only you and God know intimately what you're dealing with. That's right. And sometimes God will allow. I didn't say he's the one who brings, because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. Which means anything that is not good does not come from God. But sometimes God will allow his permissive will. He will allow things to happen for eternal purposes. Let me give you one. This is real quick. One minute. David comes to Ziklag. He Ziklag has been pillaged. And his wife, two wives, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Elder, can you say, Lord have mercy? Lord have mercy. Two wives. Uh, David's wives have been taken away. Children. And all his 600 soldiers, their wives and children, and their possessions taken away. It was so bad, the Bible says, the men wept until they had no more tears to cry. Mm. And then they turned on David. The Bible said they were ready to stone David to death. But the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We have to do that. Ooh, hallelujah. And then he turned to God and started praying to God. Yes, yes. yes Bishop, we have to do that. He started praying to God. And the I'm, I'm, I'm putting this here. David prayed to God a prayer that a five and ten pound Christian cannot pray. Mm. Would you like to know what the prayer is? I'm so glad you said yes. David asked God, should I go after them? You missed it. Church folk don't know when to be happy. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you again. David is talking to God and he said, should I pursue them? Mm. Mm. Do you know what's contained in that prayer? Mm. That means David gave God latitude. God can say yes. Oh, he can say no. Mm -hmm. And David would have been okay if God said no. Did you catch that? Now, I'm talking about his wife. I'm talking about his children. I'm talking about his possession. And yet, David did not say, God, I want to go and get them. No, he said, God, should I go and get them? And when God said yes, he turned around again. And he asked God the second question. He said, uh, you listen, I don't just go and lose. That's not my thing. Am I going to win? And God said, yes, you will go and you will win. And when you go, you will win. Oh, you missed it. That's King James Version. It's right there. God was doing redundancy. He said, you will go and you will win. And when you go, you will win. Come on, somebody. Well, 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 that, that, that tells you that he even went in a victory mindset. Yeah. That's right. And, 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 the, and, the, and the outcome and the reaction and even the response uh, would be different if you go on in victory knowing that you've already won. I see you, Bishop. And what you just said is what we read. Talk is cheap. Talk is generally cheap. Except when God is talking. Go ahead, brother. It and also, we're going to keep moving. It also tells us, too, that David didn't move without the permission of God. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I know I'm, I'm in the Adventist church, but I needed to run right there. God didn't make a step. He did not take a step until God ordered his steps. Yes, right. And so we're talking about healing rest. We're talking about root treatment. Everything is centered in the will of God and in the word of God. Yes. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Bishop. 
Things could have been so bad for David had he took his own initiative to go after them. Yes. Who knows what would have, would, have, would have transpired. That's right. So by asking God mm -hmm. and obeying God's uh -huh. will, getting permission, he was protected as he went. Come on now, man. Mm -hmm. And again, when we pray even for sickness, for healing, I said you have to grow in your relationship with God to the point when you pray and you say, Lord, heal me. I know you healed my back. Now I'm dealing with my stomach. God is sovereign. He may heal both or he may not heal the other one. But you've got to be so tight with God. And that's why I brought the issue with David. That David said, should I go after that? Meaning that he was open with, if God would have said no, he would have said, okay, God said no. Mm -hmm. But God said yes. And if you keep on reading that story, God had already set things in motion along the way. Oh my. And so, root treatment God, that God always get to the root of things. And the main thing is always the spiritual aspect. Let's get to Elijah. <laughs> Let's get to Elijah. Running away. Tuesday. And then Wednesday we're going to get too tired to run. It's 11.10. So family, we got 15 minutes. Amen? Amen. Running away. I'm not going to recount everything. I know i got some Bible readers here. This this lesson on Tuesday takes us to 1st King 18 and 1st King 19. But you know before you got to 1st King 19 and 18, there's 17 and 16 and 15. So you got to start way back to know why Elijah was running, right? You remember the story and I'm going to just truncate it. The people were apostate. They were worshipping Baal. They were giving credit to Baal for everything good that was happening. And they were blaming God for everything bad that was happening. And you know, Elijah, Bishop, Stuart, Elijah had that righteous indignation. Yes, there are some things in this life that ought to make you angry. I said, there are some things in this life that ought to make a Christian upset. Yes. There are some things that ought to make you uncomfortable. And there are some things that ought to make you, Sister Rita, speak up. Because sometimes what you don't oppose openly, you affirm silently. Oh, that's not my quote. That's Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley who said that. Some things that you don't oppose openly, you affirm silently. And that's what the Bible says, to him or to her that knows to do right and do it not, to him or her it is sin. When you see something wrong and you keep your mouth shut and you don't do anything about it, you are just as responsible. Sin of omission and the sin of commission. There you go. A sin of omission and the sin of commission. So Elijah said, Lord, I'm sick of this. I want you to show them who Jehovah God is. And so he prayed that prayer and God, just like before Vietnam, he said, Elijah, you are drunk. You pray the prayer, I'm sending you on the mission. And so Elijah went and showed up at the White House. He showed up at the palace. And if you read, he didn't get permission to go through the gates. He went through the gates. He went all the way to the throne, to the king. Mm -hmm. And if you read the account in Prophet and Kings, the Bible, I'm sorry, Ellen White says, when Elijah showed up, Ahab jumped. The king was startled because all of a sudden he has sent this righteous man. And let me tell you, so you don't have secret service, you may, have, you may not have the FBI, you may not have any security detail, but when you are the child of God, you got some company. Amen. And Elijah showed up, and the king was startled. And Elijah pronounced, you remember the judgment? Three and a half years, no rain. No rain. According to the word of God. Right? It happened. Elijah went, and he was having breakfast with the birds. Do you remember that? Did you remember that? <laughs> I took that from the children's story. They were having breakfast with the bird. Elijah was having cheeseburgers with the bird. Okay, a vegetarian cheeseburger. Okay. He was having the meal by the brook and the raven was feeding him, right? That's right. Showdown on Mount Carmel. The word of God comes to Elijah. Go, the widow is going to take care of you. The widow took care of Elijah, didn't she? And the widow was of the same race and denomination as Jezebel. God will use your enemies to bless you. And then the word came and Elijah showed up. 
They have showed up. The false prophet shows up. And they're having a showdown on Mount Carmel. You remember the story? They're cutting themselves and they're doing all kind of hoops and toopsy and all kind of stuff. Somersaults all day long. And Elijah is making fun of them. You remember that? Maybe you need to speak louder. Maybe your God is taking a trip. Maybe your God is in the bathroom. Come on, Elijah. He's talking trash now. But you can talk trash when you know your God. You better not talk trash if you, know, you, you, you don't know that your God is on your side. And then, Elijah said, build an altar. You remember? Pour some water. Mm -hmm. Dig a trench around it. Pour some more water. You see, you can do all of that when you know who God is. Amen. And then he prayed a prayer. And what came down from heaven? Fire. Elijah slayed 800 false prophets, right? Mm -hmm. He tells Ahab, you need to take out because there will be an abundance of rain. And then he outruns the chariot. That brother was, he was running like a brother running from the police. He outran the chariot, right? right. And then Jezebel. Uh, I hope you don't have a, a daughter or a granddaughter named Jezebel. Mm. Jezebel said the word, in, in 24 hours you are a dead man walking right now. I'm going to have you ahead. Mm -hmm. Now, Jezebel was playing games. Because Jezebel was, was, was getting in Elijah's mind, if you notice that. Because she could have sent somebody right there and then. She said, no, I'm giving you 24 hours to scare the brother. Mm. Uh, sometimes when a woman talks, <laughs> you better listen. <laughs> and Elijah, I don't know what caught up with him. He started running. That's where we are now. He's running. Yeah. He's running from Jezebel, right? right? So the question is, running away. He's running away. Elijah began to run and try to get away. What happened to this man who had just won a battle and all of a sudden he's taking off? We got 10 minutes. What happened? What happened? Because he rested in God before. He talked about his God before. He was confident. He had seen God do some amazing things before. What happened to him that all of a sudden he took off running. Fear. Speak up, is it? Fear. Uh-huh. Fear. Fear of what's going to happen to him. Fear of what Jezebel had said. And as you say, he had already had, you know, an encounter with God. He'd already witnessed, you know, what God could do. But yet and still, that fear set in on him. He forgot the God that he had already had encounters with. So fear took over. Fear. And he lost faith as well. Fear yeah. and fear. They don't mix fear and faith. They're, they're, they're on different ends of the spectrum. Yes, sir. So he went from a faith attitude uh -huh. to a fear attitude. Uh -huh. God did not give him a spirit of fear. Preach. That's it. That's the word right there. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power yeah. and of sound mind. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Casuba. Now, I was just going to say, so do we do that on a daily basis? Do we do that in our own lives? We see God bless us in the chapter before, and then here comes mm. another trial, here mm. comes a tribulation, and we forget, we get fear in us. Mm. And that's, that's, what, and that, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking mm. to myself, uh, when you said what happened, I said, it, humanness happened. <laughs> yes. 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 Him yes. being human happened. Yes. Because we do, we do, as Sister Shea was saying, yeah. as well as Sister Rita. That, that will be set up, uh -huh. even if it's for a short moment. Yes. It will be set up. Yes. But we have to regroup yes. and know whose we are. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. I wish we had one more hour. <laughs> we can stay right there. So depression set in. Yeah. And depression came because of fear. Mm -hmm. and, and I love what uh, each one of you have said, truly. Sister Rita, she summed it up. She said, human. And if there's somebody listening to me, watching, uh, or in the sanctuary, if you are, if the truth be told, the human in you will kick in as soon or later. And Elijah was human. As a matter of fact, when you read the book of James, he said that. When he encourages about praying, he said, Elijah was a man just like us. And he demonstrated, he demonstrated that by being afraid. And then before he knew it, he was depressed. 
I said he was depressed. <laughs> Even if it's for a moment, he was depressed. Yes. And sometimes we need to be honest about ourselves that you can find yourself in a depressive moment. But as you say, we don't have to stay there. No. It's one thing for us to be depressed. It's another thing for us to stay depressed. Mm -hmm. What's the antidote of fear? Faith. Faith. The Word of God. If you're in chapter 19, remember chapter 18. And remember chapter 17. If you're in August 2021, remember what God did for you already in January 2021. Yes, sir. Elijah ran away because fear had set in. And the fear brought about depression and his faith waned. Yeah. And we, we, we get overwhelmed. I mean, with all the stuff that he was dealing with, and then with with Jezebel uh, uh, giving him his his what she was saying was his uh, his faith, uh, we get overwhelmed. I mean, uh, talking to God, communicating with God, having a relationship with God, being in that personal time with God, we things do overwhelm you. And when you when you're overwhelmed, you 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 take that focus off of God, and you really have a pity party. That's what you're having. And so during that pity party, that's when depression and all of that set in. That's right. And that's an affirmation of your statement of being human. Yes. The human side of it. The human side. The human side of it. And so one thing, I'm, and, and time is running away from us, one thing we need to remember, Elijah had had, as the lesson said, grueling 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Being busy can get you to the place where you, before you know it, you are so physically exhausted that you are mentally and emotionally exhausted and then your thinking process is not right. Even when we're doing the right things and the good things, it's important to take rest. Even in the church, it is important to take rest. You don't have to be in every department to be a Christian. You don't have to be doing everything to know that you're serving God. It's important to get some rest and not just get some rest it's important to put a time on stuff like 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 people pulling you from all direction at the same time uh say you can do it but if you can't do it right now just say you can't do it right now amen yeah. amen mm -hmm. amen amen and it's okay if you get to the place where elijah was depressed it's okay to go look for professional help amen, amen. prayer changes everything but also prayer can inform you to go and seek some help. Amen. Amen. All right, let's keep going, family. Too tired to run. So he was running. He got so tired. What happened, family? He started talking to God. He said, I'm the only one left. He, as a matter of fact, he got to the point, he said, I'm no better than my father. What did he mean by that? When he said, I'm no better than my father. I'm the only one left and just take me. You know, it's almost like, is that, oh, that's the Jefferson, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. I'm coming to join you. Huh? What, 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 what was he talking about there when he said, I'm no better than my father's? What got to Elijah's mind? He felt helpless. Yes. He felt human. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. He wanted to die. And what did his, his ancestors, what, what did his forefathers do to the point that he compared himself to them? the guilt that he was experiencing. He ran away from Jezebel. Then he realized God had just done some wonderful things for me. And here I'm running away. Well, uh, his forefathers, I mean, uh, been in the wilderness for 40 years, uh, God doing all of that for him, and them still being in their sin and being in their rebelliousness, he was saying that he was no better than his forefathers. Yes. He had a moment of reflection. He looked at how his forefathers were, and then he looked at where he was. In the light of what just happened, he said, man, I'm no better than them. I'm just like them. And all of us are like that, only by the grace of God. Only by the grace of God. However, was he the only one left? No. Talk back. Was he the only one left? No. You see, when you're a legend, that's what Dr. Black would say. When you are a legend in your own mind, before you know it, you think I'm the only one. I'm the only vegetarian in St. Louis. I'm the only one who keeps the Sabbath right. No, 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 no. God has 7,000. 
He has other people who love him just as much as you do. But you may think, I'm just special, you know. God says there's nothing new under the sun. Yes. But you're going through, others have went through. And yes. we'll go through. Yeah. Yes. And so, can somebody, and I'm going to read this real quick as we move forward. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and say such as be of a contrite spirit. That when we humble ourselves in moments like that, it's okay to learn about Elijah. It's okay to know that he got tired. And he was too tired to run to the point where he felt like he was no better than his father. We have to apply that in our lives. We also have to remember too, Elder, that yes. God is not a respecter of persons. Can you say that again? God is not a respecter of persons. Yes. So as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Yes. So God is with us. And that's one thing that we have to remember as well. That God is always with us. We are not by ourselves in this thing. Although we may feel like it sometimes, mm -hmm. we're not. And see, and see but he's not leaving us, we leave him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. And if you notice when Elijah was running, who came to him? God. God came to him. Oh, Bishop, I got a sermon. I haven't preached it yet, Bishop. Mercy. Uh, Lord. Uh, you better not preach it before me either. <laughs> <laughs> this is about when Jesus walked on water. Mm -hmm. and, Pe and Peter said, Can I come to you? Jesus said, What? Come, right? Oh my God. I got to work this thing real quick. And, Je and Peter came to Jesus. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Jesus entered the boat. Mm. And the Bible says, And there was a great calm. Jesus made his way to them. And when he got to where they were, there was a great calm. Elijah is running away. Elijah is worn out. He can't run anymore. He talked to God, take me out. God said, I don't do that to my children. Mm -hmm. When I touch my children, I'm blessing them. It's only when they, they lose the protection that things happen to them. And then God shows up in his place. And he said, man, you need some food and some sleep. You are looking for something profound, weren't you? <laughs> I just said what the Bible said. God said, you need to eat and you need some sleep. And he fed. Didn't he feed him? I think it was some soul food. I mean, some cornbread and collard greens. It got to be something good. He fed him. And then he went back to sleep, didn't he? And then when he woke up, what did God do again? He fed him again. Because now Thursday gives it to us. Rest and more. When Elijah ran from where he was, he ran 90 miles away. 90 miles away. But this time, God said, you're going right back where you came from. Because I got something for you to do. There are two individuals I need you to anoint to be king. And then Elijah, your prodigy, I also need for you to anoint him. Three divine assignments. I'm sending you back to do what you needed to do. Rest and more. After Elijah had rested in God, God had something more for him. Let me go back. On one point, he didn't have no more strength to run, right? And then one day, he had enough strength to fly away. Oh, you can treat that on the Sabbath morning right there. He didn't have enough strength to run, but one day, by the grace of God, he had enough strength to fly away. And then in this case, I'm giving it to you, Bishop. You've got to have the last word. <laughs> and then in this case, God said, I'm not through with you. I fed you by the brook using the raven. And by the way, Pastor Wright, if he had to go through the church board, the raven would not have qualified. No, sir. Because the raven was unclean. But God is just God. He can use any of his creation to do his work. Mercy. Huh? Mercy. If, some, if, a, if a drug dealer shows up at Lighthouse and says, I got a check for a million dollars, I'm taking it. <laughs> right to the bank. Right, right to the bank. <laughs> and I know what a bank would bank on. Yes, sir. Because God owns everything. God used the raven, mm -hmm. the unclean bird, mm -hmm. to feed the prophet. Yes, sir. That's number one. And then he used the widow to feed the prophet. Mm -hmm. And then he said, now they did it, I'm going to do it. And God used the angel. Do you see the progression? Mm -hmm. He used a bird. He used the human being. He used the angel. Mm -hmm. Oh, you missed it on this. You're too quiet for me. Okay, let me talk to this side. He used the bird. And 
then he used the wind. And then he used the angel. Oh, come on, let's do it together now. He used the bird. And then he used the widow, who was of the same race and denomination as Jezebel. And then he used an angel. Which means when God is taking care of us, he moves from one level to a higher level. The songwriter put it this way, I'm climbing up the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Mm. Ooh. Go ahead, Bishop, and then we're going to close. I, I just had a couple, uh, couple things to say, Elder. Mm -hmm. Only God can revive and revitalize. Yeah. Say that again, Bishop. I like that. I do Go ahead. Only God mm -hmm. can revive and revitalize. Yes. Only He can do it. Expound on it. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Uh -huh. Without him, we cannot go any further than our human selves yeah. can take. He came to the end of himself, and then yeah. God kicked in. Woo! <laughs> God will allow for your strength to run out until you reach to his strength. Yeah. Mm. Pastor Wright, God will allow for everything to be broken in your life. Mm -hmm. And then he will take your broken pieces and make it a masterpiece. Yeah. Mm. That's the God we serve. Amen. Revive and revitalize. Amen. Rest and more. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my light. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk back to me. You know the word. The Lord is my light mm -hmm. and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's, he, he gives you a declarative and an interrogative. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm -hmm. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Free to rest. Resting in Christ. Amen? Amen. Awesome lesson. Awesome lesson. Spend time with God in the Word. You will encounter the Word. Did you catch that? Spend time in the Word and you will encounter the Word. Because it is the living Word. It is the living Word. Amen. Let us pray, Father. Can we stand and pray? Can we give God a big hand? He's a good God. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. Let us pray. Let us pray. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God, we thank you for this lesson today. You spoke to us. You spoke to us, God, that we can find healing rest in you. You told us that you get to the root cause of everything in our lives. You address our spiritual conditions first, and then you do deal with our physical needs as well. You are a good God. You are an awesome God. You can take the faith of others and apply and Credit that onto our needs. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you are a God who looks beyond our faults. And you see our needs. We thank you, God, sometimes when we're on the mountaintop, you are there. And then when we find ourselves to be at the valley, you are always there. You are a God who will never leave us, nor forsake us. You are also no respecter of persons. Whether we have a degree behind our name or no degree. Whether we have social economic status or no status. Whether we live in a zip code that's not respected or the one that is highly respected. You are no respecter of persons. And now God, we ask you come to this place we call the lighthouse. And we thank you Father for this lesson we just learned. May we take these words, may we take these lessons and apply them in our lives. The good news is you say that your word will not return unto you void. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're going to go into church, into prayer. We're going to enter into church, into prayer.